in general, the polar equations we're thinking about are solved for R as a function of theta. And I'm gonna pick an example that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna let F of theta be two plus four cos theta. When you write such an equation with R and theta, typically it's assumed you are graphing this based on polar graph paper here, a polar grid, polar coordinates, not based on rectangular coordinates. Actually, there's nothing stopping you from graphing this in rectangular coordinates, having a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, but that's not the point. The point is to graph it in a polar grid. And the way you graph it is different, though it starts out the same, from scratch, if you're gonna to start to graph this, you do wanna make a table of values, theta values and R values, where R is F of theta. Now I could pick sort of ordinary numbers here for theta, zero, one, two, three, et cetera, assumed to be angles measured in radians. But you know, if I do that, I don't know exact values of cosine of those angles, except for cosine of zero. And I also don't know how to visualize those angles so readily. I think one radian is about 57 degrees or something like that. Not something nice. So instead we use the classical famous angles, zero pi over six, which is 30 degrees, pi over four, which is 45 degrees, pi over three, which is 60 degrees, special angles. Pi over two is 90 degrees. Let's also do two pi over three, which is 120 degrees. Three pi over four. Oh, well, let's also do five pi over six and pi. And I could continue, but I think I will stop when I get to pi. Think with me here. Cosine of zero, you should know that like that. It's one, cosine of zero is one. If you're thinking about the unit circle definition of cosine and sine, you start at the point one zero, the cosine of an angle of zero is the first coordinate of that point, which is one. It's the rightmost point in the unit circle. Two plus four times one, six. I'll write it as two plus four equals six. When the angle is pi over six radians, 30 degrees, you move up the unit circle a little bit, Cosine is the first coordinate of that point. It's a little less than one. The famous value is square root of three over two. This is two plus four times square root of three over two, which simplifies to two plus two times square root of three. What is that? Two plus two times square root of three about 5.5. I'll just round to one place after the decimal since I'm trying to get just a rough graph. When theta is pi over four, 45 degrees, cosine is square root of two over two. So I get two plus four times square root of two over two, not square root of three over two. Two plus two root two. Two plus two times root two about 4.8. When theta is pi over three, 60 degrees, cosine, we're moving further up the unit circle. First coordinate is a half, not to zero yet. Two plus four times one half, two plus two, four. Pi over two is 90 degrees. First coordinate of the topmost point in the unit circle is zero. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Two plus four times zero is two. Two pi over three, that's 120 degrees. Cosine is the first coordinate. We're into negative first coordinates, negative one half. Two plus four times negative one half. Two minus two is zero, interesting. And yeah, if we keep going here, we're gonna get some negative R values. How can the distance to the origin be negative? Hang with me here. Three pi over four, 
cosine of that is going to be negative root 2 over 2. 2 plus 4 times negative root 2 over 2, which is 2 minus 2 root 2, which is negative. 2 minus 2 times square root of 2 is about negative 0.8. Couple more, two plus four times cosine of five pi over six is negative root three over two. So we end up with two minus two root three. Negative 1.5 approximately. Cosine of pi is negative one. We get two minus four, negative two. And once we go past pi, Okay, I'll do one more. Say it's seven pi over six. The most negative value that cosine takes on is negative one. At this angle, a little bit past pi, cosine starts increasing. In fact, we're gonna get the same thing as we get at five pi over six. This is gonna be two minus two root three, about negative 1.5, et cetera. And I can keep going around the horn. Once I get back to 2 pi, all the way around the circle, I'm back to 6. Now plot these points. Not in a rectangular grid, but a polar grid. Polar graph paper. When theta is 0, when I'm on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, r, the distance to the origin, is 6. That's this point right there. When theta is pi over six, 30 degrees, the distance to the origin is about 5.5. Uh, how many of these lines are there in this first quadrant? One, two, three, four, five, and then get to six would be 90 degrees. Each of these is 15 degrees apart. So 30 degrees is this line. I'm 5.5 units away from the origin when I'm on that line. You're trying to sketch this roughly on your paper since you don't have the polar graph paper. Just make a note to yourself that that's about 5.5 units away from the origin. When theta is pi over 4, 45 degrees, I'm about 4.8 units from the origin. The 45 degree line is this one. Go out 4.8 units, brings me right about there. Maybe I should have used red. It's hard to tell that's green. When theta is pi over 3, 60 degrees, I'm four units from the origin. This is the 60 degree line, I'm right about there. When theta is pi over 2, I'm two units from the origin. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees, I'm right there. It looks like we're getting a, some sort of circle, maybe. Oh, looks are deceiving. I will connect these dots with a smooth curve, and it's looking kind of circular but it's actually not a circle. Let's continue going. When theta is two pi over three, 120 degrees, like that, R is zero. I'm at the origin. Not again as theta goes all the way around from zero to pi, so it's not a curve like this, but instead it says theta goes from zero to two pi over three. This ray right here is the angle two pi over three. So I approach r equals zero tangent to that line, like that. This is not a circle. It starts out kind of circular, but it's not a circle. What do you do when r is negative like here? When theta is 3 pi over 4, which is 135 degrees, which is this line here, that ray, r is negative 0.8. What you do is instead of going 0.8 units away from the origin along that ray, you go 0.8 units away from the origin along the opposite ray. That's the convention, and it's a good convention to have. The opposite ray is like, uh, where is it? This one, I guess. So I end up right about there. Five pi over six, that's 100 and what? 50 degrees. 
that corresponds to this line, I'm further from the origin, 1.5 units away from the origin in the negative direction of this ray, which is along this ray, bringing me right about there. When theta is pi, 180 degrees, if R were positive, I'd plot along the negative x-axis here, but R is negative, so I plot in the opposite direction, two units from the origin right there. Seven pi over six would bring you right about there, continuing. This has got some symmetry to it. Ah, this curve is doing a loop-de-loop. -loop. Isn't that cool? Something about like this. Continuing and have symmetric points down here, uh, like right around here or so, and right around here or so, right around here or so. And I get this kind of shape. Wow, cool. It's got a name, it's called a Limacon. Limacon, and I guess the way you write this is with a little funny symbol under the C looking like that, but I believe it's pronounced Limacon. Uh, I don't know what language puts little funny symbols below C's like that. Anybody happen to know? I'm not sure. That's what it's called. Polar graphs of equations similar to this sometimes look like these Limacons. Sometimes they look like what are called cardioids which is a similar kind of shape, except it doesn't do a loop-de-loop. -loop. It kind of looks like a sideways heart. That's why it's called a cardioid. Uh, cardioid. That is supposed to be funny. Uh, but this one's a limicon. So at the moment, the application is to make pretty pictures. And you'll see as you do the reading, there are more pretty pictures, like flower shapes with petals that you can make with polar coordinates. Limacons, cardioids. The point at the moment, with nice spirals too. The point at the moment is to make pretty pictures and to do calculus with those pretty pictures. What kind of calculus? Maybe finding slopes, maybe finding arc length, maybe finding areas. Yeah, we wanna do those three things today. Find slopes along such curves, find arc lengths, and find areas. Those are our three main applications of calculus to this. Real life applications, not so clear other than just art, okay? Enjoying pretty pictures. Though you could imagine maybe you could, you know, you this could be a parking lot and you could drive your car like this or you could walk like that if you wanted to. So you could argue there's an application to motion. And if it was pedals you were making, yeah, you could walk or drive your car like that too. 